Hi guys, so today I want to address what's going on with the Ghislaine Maxwell trial, or better said, what's not happening, why it's not happening, and why it matters. This is an important message. It's a delicate subject, so I'll try to address it in a way that will avoid censorship, so that the message will remain on media platforms for anyone who wants to hear it. I ask you all to please use discernment when listening and responding. If you're watching this on YouTube, I provide all links below so that you can connect the dots for yourselves. I can't do that for you here. Before I begin though, please hit the like and the subscribe buttons below and turn on the notifications. This will help spread this message as well as other content on this page. Thank you all in advance for watching and for your support. Let's begin. Today is November 23rd, 2021. For those of you who aren't aware, the Ghislaine Maxwell trial begins in six days on November 29th in New York City. But you wouldn't know it from watching mainstream media. They're completely silent on the topic. Weird, right? Ghislaine Maxwell was the longtime partner of Jeffrey Epstein, a Jewish American billionaire who is described as both a quote financier and a quote hedge fund manager. He was charged with heading an international sex trafficking ring of underaged girls that serviced the elite and the powerful at his homes in New York City, Palm Springs, and on his own private island of Little St. James in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Jeffrey Epstein was arrested for his crimes on Saturday, July 6, 2019, but he died in prison awaiting trial on August 10th of the same year. Authorities claimed it was suicide, but the circumstances surrounding his death and the conflicting opinions of various coroners who studied the reports have created reasonable doubt that Epstein took his own life. As of this recording, that doubt has not been satisfied with evidence. Ghislaine Maxwell was born in France and grew up in Headington Hill Hall, a 53-room mansion in Oxford, England. She is the daughter of Robert Maxwell, a Jewish Czech media mogul. An Orthodox Jew, Robert Maxwell escaped Nazi occupation early in his life joined the Czechoslav army in exile during World War II and was decorated after active service in the British army. He rose from poverty working in publishing, eventually building an extensive publishing empire, Pergamon Press. Pergamon, also known as Pergamos, was a rich and powerful ancient Greek city in Mycenae from 281 to 133 BC under the Attilad dynasty. In Revelations 2.13, Pergamos is described as, quote, where Satan dwelleth. Maxwell lived a flamboyant and lavish lifestyle until he mysteriously disappeared in 1991, his body later discovered floating naked in the Atlantic Ocean. The official cause of death was ruled a heart attack combined with drowning, apparently having fallen overboard from his luxury yacht, the Lady Ghislaine. But in 1997, Ghislaine Maxwell commented that she believed that her father had been murdered. After his death, News emerged that Maxwell had stolen hundreds of millions of pounds from his own company's pension funds. The banks called in their loans, and Maxwell's publishing empire collapsed. By all accounts, Ghislaine Maxwell was her father's favorite child. Ghislaine moved to New York City in 1991, where her pedigree and connections helped her quickly rise to prominence as a powerful socialite, and where she met Jeffrey Epstein. They had a brief romantic relationship, but their partnership lasted for decades. She is described by associates and former staff members as both a, quote, aggressive assistant and, quote, the lady of the house. In a 2003 Vanity Fair piece on Epstein, author Vicki Ward wrote that Epstein referred to Maxwell as, quote, my best friend. She also wrote that Maxwell seemed to, quote, organize much of his life. Ghislaine Maxwell is being charged with six counts, conspiracy to entice minors and enticement of a minor to travel to engage in illegal sex acts conspiracy to transport minors and transportation of a minor with intent to engage in criminal sexual activity and two counts of perjury. She has pled not guilty to all charges. And why wouldn't she? After all, she and Epstein enjoyed connections with some of the most powerful men in the world. No doubt that she knows where the bodies are buried and no doubt that those who enjoyed the services that Epstein and Maxwell provided will do anything to ensure that she never takes the witness stand. After all, if she goes down, they're all going down with her. Considering the heinous crimes that Maxwell is charged with, the prominence of the men involved, and the fact that we live in a post-MeToo era, then why isn't this story front and center on all media? 
because the media is protecting the powerful by using distraction tactics to keep us focused on anything but this trial. And their distraction of choice is racial divide. Kyle Rittenhouse is a Hispanic 18-year-old man who shot and killed a career criminal and a convicted pedophile in self-defense during a riot in 2020 when he was 17 years old. He was charged and tried. His trial was televised. But that didn't stop the media from conducting a smear campaign against him and outright lying about the circumstances of his arrest. The media made this case about race, even though everyone involved in the incident was white. The media, and even the president, called Rittenhouse a, quote, white supremacist without a shred of evidence. These were slanderous statements that no doubt will get them a day in court if Rittenhouse decides to sue, which he should. The media obsessively reported on the verdict of the Rittenhouse case in an attempt to stoke violence. And guess what? It worked. On Sunday, November 21st, 2021, Daryl E. Brooks drove his SUV into a crowd celebrating a Christmas parade in Waukesha, Wisconsin. He killed five people and injured 48, at least 18 of them children. Brooks faces five counts of first-degree intentional homicide with additional charges pending based on further investigation. It's important to note that Daryl Brooks was released from jail not even two weeks prior on a $1,000 bond for a domestic abuse case when he ran over a woman with his car. Brooks is a career criminal and a registered sex offender whose social media accounts are full of racist rants and his intentions against what he termed as, quote, white people. His initial court date is today, Tuesday, November 23rd at 4 p.m. Central Time. No doubt that this case will get just as much media coverage as the Rittenhouse trial. Why? Because once again, the media will use it to stoke racial division in our nation, to distract from the Maxwell trial and protect the powerful. I'm asking you all to please do not fall for it. The media is not working for us, but against us. We already know this, but they have no power if we don't comply. Instead of fighting each other, let's turn our attention to the root of the problem those who own the media and who are stoking racial division to protect their powerful friends. So who owns the media? Well, let's break it down. Comcast owns NBC News, CNBC, and MSNBC. Oh, it also owns AT&T Broadband and NBC Universal, which has four divisions, cable networks, broadcast television, filmed entertainment, and theme parks. Yeah, theme parks. In fact, Comcast has invested billions to bring Minion Land and a Harry Potter village to Beijing, China. Comcast CEO is Jewish American billionaire Brian L. Brooks. Moving on. It's going to get complicated now, so bear with me. CNN is owned by CNN Worldwide, but that's just a unit of the Warner Media News and Sports Division of AT&T's Warner Media. Time Warner, who owned HBO and all HBO assets, Warner Brothers Entertainment Inc. and all Warner Brothers assets, and all of Turner Broadcasting assets, including CNN, was acquired by AT&T in June 2018, which was then renamed Warner Media. AT&T announced that it would be combining its Warner Media content with Discovery, creating a massive new company that would rival Netflix and Disney. AT&T shareholders will own 71% of the new company, and Discovery shareholders will own the remaining 29% a windfall for all involved. The merger is set to be complete in mid-2022. The CEO of Discovery is Jewish-American multimillionaire David Saslav. The CEO of AT&T is Jewish-American multimillionaire John Stanky. You may recall Stanky. He was in the news recently when journalist Christopher Rufo exposed Stanky's internal program at AT&T, the, quote, listen to understand act which ordered all white employees to read an article claiming that they were all racists, to admit to their, quote, white privilege, and to recognize, quote, systemic racism. Do you see it yet? Who owns ABC? Disney. Who's the CEO at Disney? Jewish American multimillionaire Robert Iger. Who owns CBS and Viacom? National Amusements. Who's the CEO at National Amusements? There is none. 
Shari Redstone is both the non-executive chairwoman of Viacom CBS and the president of National Amusements. She took over her father's multi-billion dollar media empire when he died on August 11th, 2020. His name was Sumner Redstone, born Sumner Murray Rothstein, a Jewish American multi-billionaire at the time of his death. Who owns Fox News? Disney acquired 21st Century Fox in 2019 and would have owned Fox, but Australian American Rupert Murdoch retained control of the news and Fox News became part of Fox Corporation. Murdoch and his family retained the majority 39% stake in the company. Who's the CEO of Fox Corporation? Rupert's son, Lachlan Murdoch. Keep in mind that Rupert Murdoch created his media empire based on tabloid press and sensationalism. Well, do you see it? I think I've made my point. At least, I hope I have. If it seems that American media is owned by about three to four corporations, that's because it is. Attempts to stop the monopolization of the media have failed time and again. And with less competition and little oversight, these media companies can pretty much say and do whatever they want. But it wasn't always this way. We used to have the Fairness Doctrine in the United States, a policy of the U.S. Federal Communications Commission introduced in 1949 that required broadcast companies to present the news in an honest, equitable, and balanced manner. But President Ronald Reagan got rid of it in 1987. So here we are. The problem isn't that those who head the media amass wealth. It's that they do it by tearing our nation apart. The quote-unquote media is obsessed with race because those in control are aware that racial divide works. It gets us riled up. It keeps us emotional and illogical. It keeps us blind to the corruption that they protect and gain from. Keep your eyes on the Ghislaine Maxwell case. Don't lose your focus with false narratives and distractions. The media lied about the Jacob Blake incident, which caused the riots in Wisconsin, which caused the Rittenhouse incident, which caused the Brooks incident. Everything preventable, everything based on lies. And for what? Answer that and you'll understand everything. Those who control the media, our news, the narratives that we all, yes, all, buy into, seek to divide us because they aren't us. Remember that. Will they ever be held accountable? I hope so. But keep in mind that their lies only give them power if we buy into them, if we sit glued to their content, if we repeat and share their message, if we react like the puppets they hope will be. I say enough, and I hope you will too. God bless America.